Hi, I'm Andy Weinberg with Miller Welders. Today we're in Everett, Washington with Joe Constance at Joe's Racing Products. We're going to talk a little bit about fabricating a Nerf bar for a micro sprint and some of the best practices for welding some stainless steel. Joe, tell us a little bit about what you do here. Well, here at Joe's, we make all kinds of products for all different facets of racing. We do stuff for asphalt late models, dirt late models, go-karts. We have all types of products here. We have steering wheels, uh, we have jacks, jack stands, uh, all kinds of fittings and a lot of accessories just to help your car go faster, look better, and just perform. And as you can see, we also build our own junior sprints and micro sprint chassis. We design, weld, and fabricate the chassis right here in-house. Thanks, Joe. This is an awesome facility. Let's take a look at the Nerf bar we're going to be building today. The material is an 065 wall, 304 stainless. We're going to be welding it with a 308L filler metal. We're going to talk about some of the best practices on how to set up your TIG torch and the welding machine. First thing we're going to do on our TIG torch is we're going to remove the standard collet body and cup, and we're going to replace it with a gas lens and a cup that's going to be larger in size. What that's going to do is going to give us better gas coverage around the stainless. The stainless is a very temperature sensitive base metal. If you overheat the stainless while welding it, it'll look dark and almost burnt instead of smooth and shiny. The gas lens helps keep the gas covering the stainless weld for a longer period of time than a standard collet body and cup would. We're going to be using the Syncowave 210 TIG welder for this project. I've changed the head on the TIG torch to a smaller head so that it helps me get into tighter spaces. I've already installed my gas lens and it put a sharpened 332 serrated tungsten in the TIG torch. Notice I do have the tungsten extended slightly from the cup. With the gas lens, because the gas flow is much more constricted around the tungsten, it allows me to pull that tungsten out a little bit further than normal and still remain proper shielding around the tungsten. Remember, it's always best to sharpen your tungsten with a fine grit dedicated grinding wheel only for tungsten. When grinding your tungsten to a point, make sure your grinding marks are going in line with the tungsten, never in a circular pattern. If you grind your tungsten in a circular pattern, kind of like a pencil sharpener would, the arc would hit those ridges and you'll have more flare offs the tungsten and the arc will not stay focused off the point of the tungsten. Because this is a non-critical component, it's just a Nerf bar, we're not going to be back purging the tubes with argon gas. However, if this was being used in the food industry or even if you were welding up some stainless steel headers, you would need to back purge those tubes so as you were welding it, as soon as the stainless became molten, it wasn't going to be pulling in contamination from the back side of the tube. With stainless steel, you're going to set the machine up similar to how you would with regular mild steel. We're going to set the machine on DC. Because this is 065 material, we'll be setting the machine around 65 to 70 amps, using the foot pedal to fine tune that. Our total amperage we'll be using may only be around 40 to 50. Also, because stainless is very temperature sensitive, we may be using the pulser to reduce the total heat going into the piece. You can set the pulses per second either as a timing sequence for a real slow material deposit where every time the machine pulses you're adding material. Or you can set the pulses a little bit faster to where that the pulses will agitate the weld puddle and give you a tighter ridge form. In either case, because the pulser is pulsing from a high to a low background setting, it's reducing the total heat going into the piece, which helps reduce warping and keeps the coloring on the weld bead. When getting ready to weld your stainless, it's important to keep your torch oriented in the proper position and keep your arc lengths low. For tubing, you're challenged because you're always moving the torch around this small area. It's important to try and keep the TIG torch oriented in the proper position when moving around the piece. If your arc lengths get too long, the arc will fan out and overheat the stainless. Also, as you're going around the piece, if your torch angle becomes too severe, the arc will also fan out, overheating the weld bead and increase the potential for contamination.
We've now finished welding our MicroSprint Nerf bar, and due to the diameter of the tubing, we had to weld it in four different steps. Now it's ready to be installed on our MicroSprint. You also may have noticed when we were welding that chassis, we used the new weld mask auto darkening welding goggles from Miller. These are great when welding in that kind of environment where you're up in a tight area and you need some clearance that a normal welding helmet won't give you. The weld mask is perfect because it's confined right up next to your head and provides full protection of the head and neck area. For more information about Joe's Racing products, you can go to joesracing.com. And for more information on the new Miller weld mask or the Synchrowave 210, check out millerwelds.com.